Okay friends, let's get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground and it's a good idea to have the suspension hanging. After you've done that, if you happen to have a hubcap, go ahead and remove that. Continue on to removing all four of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that the wheel's off, we have a nice clear view of our tie rods. The first thing we're going to do is come right here. This is considered your jam nut. Spray that down with some penetrant. Allow that to do its job. And then I'll continue on over here to the outer tie rod end nut. We'll spray that with penetrant as well. The next thing that I do is I use some nice long pliers. I'll grab right onto that jam nut and continue by turning it clockwise to break it free from the outer tie rod end. Generally for your outer tie rod end, you're going to find you have a locking cotter pin. Go ahead and remove that and then remove your mounting nut. Use a 17 millimeter to remove your mounting nut. Now typically for this, I'll take my nut and I'm going to start it back on a couple good threads. The next thing we need to do is cause some vibration to try to break the tie rod end stud free from the knuckle. At this point, we're going to continue on by removing the outer tie rod end from the inner tie rod end. As we start turning this counterclockwise to remove it, Count the amount of rotations. Essentially, every time this stud faces up, it's another rotation. One, two, and so on. Go ahead and write that number down. Now we're going to move along to removing our jam nut. To do that, you're going to use a 19 millimeter socket to remove this, but what you'll find is the inner tie rod end stud spins with it. Go ahead and use some locking pliers to hold the inner tie rod end still. Now let's continue with some long nose pliers, grab onto the outer clamp for the bellows boot, give it a squeeze, remove it. Give it a quick inspection. Typically, it's a good idea to reuse these. If it's not reusable, you can use a wire tie. Now let's continue on with a hammer and a long pry bar. We're going to be using the pry bar to break free the inner clamp. If you were to look down along where my pry bar is, along the bellows boot, you're going to find an ear for the inner clamp. The clamp is a single time use. Just go ahead and use the pry bar and your hammer. Break it free so you can remove the bellows boot. Let's grab that clamp off of there. Set that aside. Now we can grab onto the bellows boot. We're going to give it a twist and a tug and try to slide it off of the power steering rack and inner tie rod end. Once you have your bellows boot off of there, you want to give it a close inspection. Make sure it doesn't look like it's torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Assuming it looks good, set it aside. Once the boot's out of the way, continue on by turning your wheel all the way to the right. When you do that, it's going to push the inner tie rod end on the driver's side out. Once it's out far enough, you can continue on with an inner tie rod end tool. There's several different types of tools you can use. Ours looks like this. It's essentially going to go right around the base of the inner tie rod end. I'll tighten it up, then we'll turn this counterclockwise to unscrew it from the power steering rack.
for my tool in particular, down at the bottom I have an area for a 3 8 drive ratchet. I'm going to use an adapter and a half inch drive ratchet because it's a little longer. There we are. Now that it broke free, I'll remove my tools. Fully unscrew your inner tie rod end from your power steering rack. There it is, friends. Now that we have the inner tie rod end off of there, let's continue by cleaning up the power steering rack. Once you have the shaft area cleaned here, you also want to inspect deep down in there. Make sure you don't see a whole bunch of fluid in there. If you do, typically that means that your power steering rack seal is no good. If that's the case, you're going to have to replace the power steering rack. Ours looks fine. Now it's time to install our brand new inner tie rod end. In your kit, you're going to find it came with a brand new locking washer. What do I mean by locking washer? You're going to find that you have two tabs that protrude up and out. Looking at the power steering rack, you can find the two areas that that needs to fit into. Keep that in mind. Let's take our flat washer and put it on the inner tie rod end with our tabs facing out towards where the threading is. Now we'll go ahead and take this and we're going to thread it in. As we do, make sure your two tabs line up with the rack accordingly. I'll just take that, push it right up against the power steering rack so it's in place. And now I'll turn the inner tie rod in. Let's make sure that inner tie rod ends nice and tight. Right there is where it stopped. I'll just make sure it's tight. It's important to make sure that when you're tightening this, you're not twisting the shaft that goes into the power steering rack. We don't want to damage the rack in any way. Now we're going to have to take the washer and peen it over against the flat spots that are on the inner tie rod end. I'll show you on the original. You can see looking at this one, flat spot, flat spot. You would just go ahead and peen this over so it's bent in there, and that's what locks in your inner tie rod end to the power steering rack. For this, I'll use some long pliers, crimp it right in there. Do the same for the other side. The next thing I like to do is take some high temperature lubricant and come right inside the joint of the inner tie rod end. The reason why I want to do this is to help make sure that it functions properly for a long time and it stays well lubricated. Now that I've finished with that, I'll continue with my lubricant and on the inner tie rod end, you're going to find that you have a singular groove pretty close to the center of it. Go ahead and put a bead of lube along that as well. The next thing you want to do is straighten out the wheel so it's in its original position. Now it's time to put on our bellows boot. For this, I'm going to take a wire tie and put it right around the inner aspect. I'm going to make sure that I don't over tighten it because I do need this to slide over the power steering rack. Let's take that and we'll slide it all the way down onto the power steering rack at the end there. Just slide this up on here. I'm going to put it onto the power steering rack. Once I'm sure that it's completely around the power steering rack all the way in there, I'll make sure that I tighten up that wire tie as tight as possible. Trim off the excess. Assuming your original clamp was good, go ahead and slide that right on there. Now let's apply some copper never seize to the threads. Install your jam nut. Now we can install our outer tie rod end. When we put this on here, you want to make sure you install it the exact amount of turns as it took to remove it originally. One, two, three, so on.
slide that tie rod up into your knuckle. Put on your castle nut. Bottom it out. Once you have this bottomed out, torque it to 36 foot pounds. Once you have it torqued at 36, the next thing you want to do is pay attention to the slots on the nut and the hole that goes through the stud of the tie rod. You want to get them to match up so you can slide your locking cotter pin through. If for some reason it's not lined up properly, continue tightening until the very next slot does. Peen that over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on its own while you're driving down the road. Now let's move along to our jam nut. We'll bottom this out against the outer tie rod end. Once you bottom that out, we're gonna continue tightening it. To tighten it, you can either use a 7 8 wrench or even a 22 millimeter, but you also make sure you use an 18 millimeter wrench to hold the outer tie rod end so you don't damage it while you're tightening this. The next thing you want to do is just make sure that the tie rod end is flat, level with the ground, and not twisted. All right, now you just want to double check everything. Make sure you torqued it as required. Let's get the wheel back up on here. Start on all four of our lug nuts. We'll bottom them out. Get the wheel safely back on the ground, and then we'll torque each of the lug nuts to 76 foot pounds. <laughs> Alright, the wheel's safely back on the ground. Let's torque these in a crisscross manner to 76 foot pounds. Torqued. If you happen to have a hubcap, go ahead and put it on now. The area you want to pay attention to is the area that has the valve stem hole. Line it up with the valve stem on the wheel and then drive it into place. Make sure it's secure all the way around so it doesn't fall off while you're driving down the road. Okay friend, we got the car back together. At this point, you want to safely take it for a road test. Listen for any funny noises and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching.